Hey again guys and welcome back. Um, I'm quite fond of beginnery type projects and quite fond of these diffused RGB LEDs. So I figured I'd make a video today uh, showing you some beginner Arduino concepts and uh, three cool projects you can make pretty easily uh, with these RGB LEDs. Uh, I'm especially fond of these big 10 mil ones. They look really good when they're lit up. Uh, so the point here is for you to give this a shot yourself and have some fun and learn some coding along the way. Make sure to check the description for the timestamps if you want to skip around the video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how they're connected up. So first things first, uh, these particular ones are common anode. And so that means there's a uh, five volts that comes in on this pin here, the long one in the middle. Then this is red, this is green, and this is blue all the way on the outside. And the way we're gonna set this up for all of the sketches is that I have red, green, and blue going to the red, green, and blue pins. And we have um, a 270 ohm resistor going to the positive rail here. We just carry over our positives and negatives to the Arduino Uno. Everything will be done on the Uno today, simply because if you're a beginner, the Uno is a fantastic choice if you're going to be reusing your projects, reusing your Arduino. The simplified wiring diagram for this is simply five volts up here, 270 ohm resistor to the common pin. So there's one pin that's common to all these uh, LEDs inside the RGB LED. And uh, red going to pin 11, green going to pin 10, and uh, blue going to pin 9. So let's get started with our first project. For the first project that I'm calling Random Button, um, all we're doing is we're adding a switch between pin 12 and ground. All we need to add. And here is the project itself. So we've got our Uno, and we've got that one switch here between uh, pin 12 and ground. And all that this project does is when you hit the switch here, it randomizes a color on the LED. And there's also a delay, so it only can do it once every second. So if you hold it down, it'll just cycle a new color every second. So a very simple project but very effective on the effect you get out of it. Every time you hit the button you get a random color. Let's take a look at the code. So for the code, taking it step by step, uh, first things first is I defined which pins we'll be using. So the red LED will be on 11, green on 10, blue on 9. Our switch is going to be on pin 12. Uh, these I picked because they are PWM pins and that will become important later on. Um, I also put a uh, value for red, green, and blue and set them to zero. We want them to start at a state of zero. Next things, next we are doing the pin modes. So uh, because these are our LED pins, they are outputs and then we've got our pin mode for the button switch or yeah button switch I guess uh, input with a pull-up so basically the, sig the, uh, the, the signal will always be high on that pin until we hit the switch connecting it to ground which will read a low then we want to write do a digital write for our red green and blue to be in a high state don't forget we're giving it 5 volts so if we put five volts on the ground side, nothing's gonna light, so our LED will start off. Then we go into our loop, and in our loop, simple as could be, we do an if statement. So if the uh, button switch, we read the button switch, and if it's low, then we're gonna take the red, green, and blue values and randomize a number between 0 and 255. This is um, basically the analog write. This is from uh, nothing to 255, which would be high, like basically 5 volts. And so what this is doing is if it randomizes a number and it comes up to 
uh, 0, that color will be on at max brightness, because don't forget, we're controlling the ground side. So 0 will be more ground. If it comes up 255, then it'll be completely off, because we're putting 5 volts on the other side. So um, red, green, and blue. And then we're going to write those values directly on, in an analog write. The analog write is a number between 0 and 255, so that's what our random is doing here. So basically it's a red value equals random minimum number for the random and maximum number for the random. It'll take one of those numbers and then it'll write it to our red pin at the value we just randomized there. Then we wait one whole second so that it just doesn't get overwhelmed by inputs. It's basically like a cheap debounce and then it waits for the button to be pressed low again. Super simple but really cool effect. So when you boot it up, it boots up in the off state like that. And as soon as you press the switch, it'll give you a random color. And it gets that con color randomness by having random values of both red, green, and blue. So it's theoretically possible to have most of the visible colors just from these three colors. So there we go. It's also possible to have complete white, but it's so rare that they're all like in the right value and the same values that you won't see it that often, but it is possible. And for project two, which I am calling analog in, we're doing the same LED setup up here. We're ignoring the first project's button here, and we are adding three potentiometers between five volts and ground and sending their sense pins to uh, AO for red, A1 for green, and A2 for blue. And if you're confused about the symbols, it's just a symbol for a potentiometer. You can use any potentiometer you'd like. And let's see what this gives us. And this may look complex, but I promise you it is not. These are all just potentiometers in different shapes. These are two slide potentiometers. They move this way and this is a regular rotary. And here are the uh, AO, so red, green, and blue. And this is the same connections as we had before. And there's just a lot of wires because I had to bring five volts and ground over. But this is what it looks like. So this one here controls blue. This one here controls red and this one here controls green. And now you can play with them in any sort of combination to make any combination of colors you would like. And uh, these slide pots are amazing. I wish I had more of them because they're actually a lot of fun to play with. You can make it switch between uh, green and red and anywhere in between. We can add our blue to it. It's awesome and you can even sort of adjust it to get a pretty close facsimile to white which is pretty neat so again super simple project but really effective use of RGB LED and some Arduino code so let's look at that code right now and again we'll go through the code fairly slowly so it's easy to understand so first there's our output pins we know those 11 10 and 9 for red green and blue but now we have an uh, input pin, so AO for red, A1 for green, A2 for blue. Uh, then we've got our values, red, green, and blue, and we set them to zero so it starts at a sort of like an off state. Then we do our pin modes in the setup. So we want our red, green, and blue to be outputs. We want our uh, potentiometer sensing wires to be inputs because we're going to read them so red in green in blue in as inputs and then we want to set everything here just to a default high it doesn't really matter I just do this for my own practice but you'll see it doesn't really matter then um, what you do in the loop is your red val uh, is the analog read of your red in pin divided by 4. The divided by 4 is just a quick little bit of um, trickery because the analog read is more precise than the analog write. So the analog read goes between 0 and 1024 I believe and the analog write goes between 0 and 255. 
So it's roughly divided by four gives you a cheap and easy way to um, get that value within range. So um, we take that value divided by four and then we write the value of it. So we write our red value here. Do the same thing for green, we read the green in, we write to the green, we read the blue in, divide by four again and write to the blue. And then I put a five millisecond delay just to make sure it's uh, stable, like just so these readings don't fluctuate all over the place. And this works fantastically. So again, a nice easy code, you get to do some little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of reading, and you get a pretty cool thing out of it. Let's go on to project number three. For project number three that I call Push for Bright, uh, we're doing the same LED setup here, but we're ignoring this button, we're ignoring these analog ins, we are going to set um, switches to ground between pins four to ground, three to ground, and two to ground for red, green, and blue. Most of the magic on this one will happen in the code. Let me show you it. So this project I'm really proud of, but it requires a bit more of a demo. So watch, we've got three switches here, red, green, and blue. Look what happens when I press the red. So our red is gradually increasing in brightness. And when I let it go, it's going to gradually decay in brightness. See, it's almost off now. And it decays at the same rate that it was building. So same thing for the green here. And then same thing that decays for the blue. The fun part is all these are independent of each other so you can actually mix and match the colors at will. So here we have red and blue and then I can add some green while those decay and I can just come over and hit more and hit more. I can hit them all if I want to and it just gradually increases in color. Whoops, if the switch falls out, it doesn't help. And you can make all sorts of cool combinations. So I'm really proud of this one. Um, I'd love it a little bit more permanent because the, uh, the buttons fall out of the breadboard often, but I think it's really cool. Let's look at the code for this. So please be patient with me. I don't write the most efficient code and there's gonna be a lot of sort of uh, uh, same things happening with different colors because I have three colors to deal with. So first things first are um, pins, 11, 10, and nine, same thing for red, green, and blue. Then we have the input pins, four, three, and two for red, green, and blue. And then we have the, uh, the val variables. So 255 on all of them, I set them as default, which means it'll default as off. For our pin modes, of course we want our color pins to be outputs because we're going to be driving the LEDs from them. We want our um, inputs, the in red, in green, and blue in, to be inputs with the built-in pull-up, which is an efficient use of the hardware that's already on there. And then we want a digital write um, all the pins high, put leave them in a high state because we want them off. Here's where it gets more complex. I want to skip over this val stuff and move right down to this if statement here, because this is where the stuff is actually going. Remember our red val is set to uh, 255 at the moment. So if digital read red in is low, so if the red, if the, the red button is pressed okay we are going to decrement that's what this minus minus means we're going to decrement red valve so we'll go from 255 to 254 and start turning on that led at its lowest brightness if however the button is not pressed then we're going to increment the red valve. So if it was anywhere below 255, it would then bring it back up to finally hit 255. But what happens if we go beyond 255? After 255, the, the LED is off. You can't go more off than off, right? 
And same thing here, if we keep our finger on the button too long, we're gonna go more than or less than zero. We're gonna go negative and we don't want that. And there might be a good elegant way to do it, but this is what I did at the beginning of the loop. If the red vowel is higher than 254, this can actually be 255 I've now realized, but it will work like this as well. Um, if it's bigger than that, then just set it to 254, period. That's it. And then if the red vowel is smaller than zero, just set it to zero. That's it. So those two things deal with the red. Then you've got the same thing for red and for uh, blue and green after that. So we come in here. If it's pressed, we decrement the red vowel. Then we're going to write the red vowel in and then we're going to give it a 100 millisecond delay. So at this point here, if we've pressed it once, we're at uh, 254 and it's going to start turning on the red at a super low brightness. If we keep our fingers pressed, it's going to go through that if loop again, lower it to 253 and then write a 253 value here and then so on and so on until you get to zero, which is max brightness. So you just multiply that you know, by the amount of colors we have, which is three, and that's the code for it. So this is a cool way to practice learning the increment and decrement um, sort of values and to keep your values within a specified number. This, this can actually be 255. I set it to 254 uh, just during my testing. It still works because uh, even a digital write or an analog write of 254 isn't, uh, it's not big enough to actually turn it on yet, but just use 255 in your case if you'd like. And so that's it. That should be enough inspiration to get you going. I want you guys to make these projects for yourself. Practice writing the code for yourself. It's not super difficult. It does take a little bit of noggin scratching, but I totally believe in you. You guys can do it. If you have other ideas of simply kind of simple or maybe a little bit more intermediate things you can do with these RGB LEDs, hit me up in the comment section below and I might make a second edition of this video. If you didn't like the format of this, let me know in the comments below how I can do better. But if you want more of this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe and thanks for watching.